So when you're actually listening to yourself, to your worth, anything that resonates in terms of worth and joy and freedom and more of yourself, you're actually loving yourself back for the first time ever. And it rejoices. It says thank you. It actually says thank you. It's not like, oh, it doesn't need that. No, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you, as the kid that you are in an adult body, need, or, yeah, in a sense, need the love. And when you are given an act of love like that, that your heart melts like, I almost can't believe that I got this love from you or that I received this, whatever, maybe it's just a compliment or that just hits the right string and makes you feel, ah, worthy again for a moment. That's, in a sense, that's the same way the higher self feels when you start paying attention and you start thinking it for its signs instead of blaming it and, and uh, it actually feels like, ah, oh, finally somebody listens to me. <laughs> finally you see me for who I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can build that relationship with yourself and it's really enjoyable it's really pleasurable it's really deeply enjoyable and loving and gives a lot of meaning to your life and that's when things start to flow like circumstantially because you start to listen the only reason why things don't flow is because you're not listening in the particular way that you're meant to listen so that those signals of when things don't flow just be signals to not define that in any negative way anymore. Whenever something happens to you that seems to obstruct where you want to be, realize that it's only there so that you can get sooner to where you want to be. But if you label it in the way that, oh, this is an obstacle, what you're doing is you're not listening, you're not trusting yourself, you're not trusting you, the you that sees more than you can see. So when you do, ah, that opens up and sometimes the obstacle immediately removes because what you needed to learn to get to that joy you wanted was simply to no longer define it in a negative way. That's why it needed an obstacle in the first place. But sometimes that obstacle is actually to lead you in a different focus or direction that actually gets you there sooner and more expanded. It has an agenda for you. The higher self's agenda is for you to be more and more and more ecstatic, more and more of itself, more and more a whole being with it together. So build that communication and start to feel more and more that it is you. It's not just given to you, it's you giving it to you. It's the giver, you're just the receiver. But you are the giver too. It's not that the giver is not you, you see? And why would you want anything for yourself that's not in your best interest? The higher self is completely selfish. That's the big, biggest ego ever in that sense. It only wants what's good for itself, ever, for all of itself, for all of its parts and you're one part of you. And so you want all that's good for you. So when something happens in your life and you don't label it in a way that's actually thankful and that doesn't see it, if you're labeling in a way that doesn't see it as a way to move into even greater bliss, but you see it as a way to move into less bliss because you're less worthy and it means, oh, life doesn't work and you're not worth it, da 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 When you're doing that, that negative labeling, that's actually when you stop the flow. That's when it stops working. It doesn't stop working, it just starts working in the opposite direction. So if you start appreciating the gifts that at first glance may seem negative, because that's how we've learned to label that particular situation, and all the bystanders would agree, oh my God, did that happen to you? Oh, I'm so sorry. He's such a bastard, or she's such a slut, or whatever. <laughs> you know. But if you don't go into that negative game, if you see that Everything that happens in your life is given by the higher you with only one interest, one selfish interest, to create more joy for itself, for you. And you are you. You are you. You are you. As you. As one you. The only place where it doesn't seem to be one you is because we've turned that into a difference. But y there's only one you. It's the whole of you. So if you start to listen to the whole of you and realize that everything that happens in your life is with the best intention and with the best outcome if you learn to listen. Then it's impossible. After all, it becomes impossible. I'm not saying it never happens anymore here, but it becomes impossible more and more and more and more themes of your life and more and more areas of your life to see it as a negative thing. When something happens that everybody else calls negative and everybody else pities you for it, it's like, why? No. <laughs> this is the best thing that can happen right now. And if you really start to see it in that way, you really start to experience it in that way. 
and that which may be so detrimental to everybody else and they may turn it for themselves into a victimhood story if the same thing would happen to them. For you it's only an empowering thing. It's like this is only a signal that I'm about to receive more of myself. This is more of myself, more of myself, more of myself. So if you start listening like that, the higher part of yourself in that sense is going to be very, very thrilled, very, very happy, excited, and it's going to reward you for that. You see? Sounds a little bit silly, but it's not going to reward you more than it already has. It's just that you start to receive the reward. The reward is always there. <coughs> but if you label things in a detrimental way, in a way of complaint and victimhood and blah, 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 that's what the ego effect really is. If you start to define it in ways that work for you, that's actually the disappearance of the ego effect. That's not more ego building yourself up with pride or with whatever it is. No, that's actually moving into more of yourself and leaving the space where the ego effect can even effectuate itself. So just start to listen and you'll be thrilled and you'll be thrilled. And you'll feel that you both use, both use will be thrilled. You'll be thrilled. <laughs> And it will be like having intercourse with yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> <laughs> a deep ecstasy, more and more. Deep appreciation, a mutual appreciation. Because you're doing your part, which is simply to listen and receive. And it's doing its part, which is always does flawlessly, which is to give, to send, to know how and when, etc. The timing of things. But if we can let go of the how, that's when we can truly start to listen. If we have an agenda for the how, we're basically not trusting that our higher version of ourselves has a way better grip on these things. <coughs> See, we're trying to, we're just like, we're not even capable, we're zero percent. I was going to say like we're point zero zero one percent able to guide our lives, but in a sense, nothing. Like we're not able to know how and why and what's in our best interest. So that's not our duty, you see. And when we're trying to take on a job that's not ours, it's when we get depressed, it becomes really heavy, it becomes a burden, a backpack, a victimization, sense of betrayal from the universe, from yourself, hopelessness, desperation, suicide, all these things. But if you simply start to listen, that's all you need to do. Stop figuring out the hows. It's not up to you how. It's up to you how. But, why, why won't you trust that? Why won't you trust that the you will take perfect care of you? Because it's you. Wouldn't you take perfect care of you? If you were so much wiser and so much more established in pure, unconditional love, would you not want the best for you? And that's what you is. Why not trust yourself? There is no universe that you within need to find your way. You don't need to find your way. That's the beauty. You don't need to find your way. You just need to... Think. Think yourself. Mm -hmm. And your only duty, your end of the deal, end of the bargain, bargain is simply to listen and to enjoy yourself. To listen to what resonates and go in that direction. That's all. It's really very simple. We've overcomplicated, you know, our uh, job description has become way longer than it is. It's just one thing for everyone. <coughs> Worry is nowhere in that list. Not in the original list but it's everywhere, all over the paper, in our present list. Concern, how-tos, figuring out, <coughs> we're, not we're not managers. We're not meant to be managers. Like, our intellect is not meant to be a manager. Our consciousness here, our physical focus, is not meant to know things, like how and when and why. But if you can simply know that nothing ever happens, no how, when, or why ever happens, that's not leading to more of your greater bliss and joy, then you start to listen. You start to uh, stop stopping yourself. You no longer stop yourself. It always flowed. It always worked. But you thought you had to. Nope. Nope. I don't. This doesn't feel. Uh, I don't want to go here. I want to go here. But really, if that naturally happens for you, and you start to listen, you can actually find the resonance in these things, in these challenges, because you're not labeling them in, in a negative way. You're not avoiding, you're not trying to manage things. You're letting go of the idea of time. Thus you're creating less of the sensation of waiting for something to happen, goals in the future, and more and more you just start to live naturally in the present moment without trying to be present, just because it's your nature to be present, because it's your duty to enjoy the present as much as you can. Because if you enjoy whatever is given to you, 
if you say thank you to everything that's given to you, it will start to flow. Just say thank you. Thank you. The things you don't like, thank you so much. I know this is in my best interest. Not in a sort of, because you have to learn this lesson. No, I know this is in my best interest because it leads to ecstasy. It leads to unconditional love.